Good evening, everyone. My name is Nadine Pierre, and welcome to Interlude. Have you ever wondered why it is that it seems in this society, almost everything has to be a competition? Why can't we just work together? I mean, did we actually choose to be birthed in order to compete against one another and see who can outwit, outbeat, outsmart the other? Or were we put here to work together and figure it out together? I feel as though if we were truly put here to merely outwit one another or you know, see who could be the better con person, <laughs> then what would be the point? I think in each religion, right, and each spiritual practice, it starts and ends with love. And what we do in the middle is on us. You know, throughout the Course in Miracles, we're basically told to help our brothers and sisters so that we can each and all of us together can reach at one minute, right? And realize that we're not separate from source and we're not separate from each other either. I honestly believe that we chose to be born on this planet in this form to help each other transform something to help each other overcome being human or work through the humanity within us to be spiritual beings in human form. It's choosing courage over comfort. And that's manifested in many forms. Everything from helping a friend in need, comforting a stranger, reaching out when you're in need, teaching someone something difficult, being uncomfortable. It's remembering that the obstacles are actually opportunities to move us towards spirituality. I have to keep reminding myself of that one all the time. And so, if our work is to express our divine authenticity in the world, if it's incomplete right now or not started, then we gotta keep going. And we gotta just really look within and reach out to one another to help us see what it is that we need to do in order to be. It's being and bringing your whole self into the world for everyone to see and create the space for others to also authentically be. It's interesting that we fear that so much yet when we actually do it, when we are actually being our authentic selves, people we never would have thought of love us more. So be uncomfortable. By the way, did I already say it takes choosing courage over comfort? Uh, let's take a breath and go into prayer. In present times, it seems that misunderstandings bring chaos. Our differences bring chaos and separation. But sitting in the silence changes everything quieting my mind from the chaos of the world I live in, my world. 
quieting my mind from the chaos of the confusion, judgments, and assessments. My thoughts. Quieting my mind from the chaos of my human mind. Moving from doing to being. Being love and understanding. Being understood. That's the feeling we all seek. Meaning, you get who I am and I get who you are be it extrovert and bold or humble and meek, we share a mutual respect. Giving each other the respect to be and express. Each of us finding a sense of belonging, of being heard. But being heard starts with willingness. Willingness to listen, to communicate, have a conversation and investigate the possibilities of a new perspective. Seeking love in all its versions and expressions. Being a love detective. Because when I open up and look around, share my experience of my seeming difference, hear your experience from the other side of the fence, we begin the healing of our misguided feelings and endless possibilities are found. And our consciousness is raised from one of fear towards one of love. Next thing you know, we're no longer phased and even begin to praise or be in awe of individuality within and as part of community. My prayer is that we go within to tap in to the love the deeper sense of being loved unconditionally as whole and complete. That we see the similarities, embrace and give thanks for the differences so that we may see the beauty around us and in each other to share this life this walk on earth. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Nadine. You're welcome, Nina. Thank you. Mm. Welcome again to our Wednesday evening, uh, Wednesday evening interlude service where we all gather together and take a moment in midweek to remind ourselves or to remember that, that we are all one and to remember the truth of our being. And on this particular Wednesday evening, Wednesday interlude service, um, this is going to be Nadine's last service with us. And I just wanted to extend deep and profound gratitude for her almost five full months together on, on the platform doing this Wednesday evening remembering together. So thank you so much for being, being here and doing this. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This was amazing. Mm. Well, you will be missed. I'll let you know I that. I will miss it as well. <laughs> so, I said, you're welcome to, whenever you have a free moment, you're welcome <laughs> to step in for, for a night. So anyway, thank you. 
<sighs> For some time now, I've had an exercise regimen. Every morning, I pull out my yoga mat and start with my routine. I'll, I'll spare you the exact details. It varies a bit from day to day, but essentially, I pull from the same group of exercises over and over and over. And I imagine that many of you have a similar regimen, whether it's yoga or Zumba or stretching or weights or whatever it may be for you. And on this particular morning, after over seven months of not having missed a single day, I pulled out my mat and lay down and suddenly got that feeling of, I don't want to do this today. It's boring. I do the same thing over and over and over. And I just don't want to do it today. And no, you're not imagining the wine. It was there. I mean, I just wanted one morning off. Just one. That ever happened to you? That ever happened to you, Nadine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but I know myself pretty well. One morning off turns into two mornings off, and then a week goes by, and perhaps a month, with my showing up just sort of now and then to do my exercises, and then I'm back to square one. And I'm, oh yeah, stiff and uncomfortable and less flexible and not as strong and wishing that I hadn't stopped. After seven months of staying committed to my workout, I am stronger, more flexible, in less pain, and more resilient. The reason that I am those things is because for the last seven months, I have been repeating the same exercises over and over and over to strengthen and build muscle, something that my younger self never dreamed I'd have to do, by the way, and to build deep in my muscle's memory the ability to contract and stretch and return to a neutral, relaxed state without holding unnecessary tension. And as I lay there on the yoga mat, I had the thought that building physical muscles and physical strength and physical flexibility and resilience isn't all that different than building spiritual muscle and spiritual endurance and spiritual resilience. They both take intention, commitment, and yeah, repetition, doing the same thing over and over and over. Just as having a daily exercise regimen is critical to building physical muscle, having a daily spiritual practice is vital to building spiritual muscle. Cynthia Bourgeau puts it in this most beautiful way. When one of Jesus' disciples asked, Master, where do you come from? Jesus replied, come and see. In other words, to have that same knowingness and experience of the Father and I are one, you'll have to go where I go. And to go where I go, you'll have to practice. Cynthia goes on to say, to really know this presence, you need to tune in on a different wavelength to shift from your usual binary operating system, in other words, a belief in separateness, to the heart frequency, Wisdom Christianity is practice-driven. When you do the practices to nurture the heart, you will sense this connection as a living bond. Your being becomes perceptive to the higher meaning. And when the practices that sustain this encounter begin to drop out, you revert back to your usual operating system and the connection fades. In other words, you are the vessel, the instrument that receives the wisdom. As you attune and fine-tune your instrument, you will know. It's not knowing something more like a new fact or a piece of esoteric information. It's knowing deeper, knowing with more and more of your being engaged. We show up every day with the intention of deepening our knowingness of our oneness. And it does take showing up every day, over and over and over. It really holds true for, true for many things. 
If you want to play a musical instrument well, you need to sit down every day and practice the same things over and over until the music is in your fingers, in your hands, in your feet, in the marrow of your bones, until we and the instrument are one. If we want to be a basketball star, we get on the court every day, shooting the ball at the basket over and over and over until the knowing of just what it takes to put the ball through the hoop is part of who we are. And if we want to have that deep knowingness of truth, of the truth of who we are, if we want to be a vessel for light and wisdom and love, and abundance, then we need to tell ourselves over and over and over the truth of who and what we are. That there is only one infinite presence and that it is impossible for us to be separate from it. That, in Joel Goldsmith's words, there is only one God manifesting its infinite spiritual nature as your being. I and my Father are one, not two. In that oneness, all that God is, you are. And we do this over and over and over until it lights us up from within and we know that we know that we know that it's truth. And this doesn't mean, or at least I haven't found anyone yet for whom this is true, this doesn't mean that when we know it, It means a life of constant unicorns and tiptoeing through the tulips. Having a practice and knowing this truth doesn't mean that we will not have conflict, no more than having an exercise regimen that helps us to be stronger and more flexible doesn't mean that we won't ever take a tumble. Any more than being a virtuoso player means that we will never strike a wrong note. Or as a pro basketball player, we will never miss a basket but we will have resilience and a deep knowing that the truth hasn't changed. We are living on the earth plane, which is a plane of contrast. We will rub our edges against other edges as we navigate life on earth. And when we bump into the rough edges in this world of form, of contrast, soft and hard, up and down, hot and cold, the stronger our foundation is, the easier it is for us to remember the truth of who we are. And this means that we can approach our conflicts with our hearts more fully open, with vulnerability, with compassion, with authenticity. And that allows us to walk through those conflicts, those differences, very differently than when we approach them with a belief in separation. And so tonight, again, I will remind us of the truth. If you will, please allow my words to be your words. You can close your eyes if you'd like. I know that there is one infinite ocean of consciousness that I call God. This perfect reality is everything that is and everything that is not. It is the one loving, one loving presence in which all life has its being. It is the one, the only, whole and complete. There is nothing else. It is the one and only good. It is the one boundless joy. It is the limitless peace. It is the infinite power without breadth or width or depth so that I cannot draw a line and say, here God ends, for there is no end to God and no beginning. It is everything from the far reaches of the universe to a buttercup and a mountain meadow. Which brings it to me, this all-knowing consciousness cannot be everything without me. And so I am one with this one life, and all that it is, I am. Its life is my life. It is the spark and the substance of every part of me. Its divine order permeates my every cell. 
the good that it is, I am. I plunge into myself and find the endless deep ocean of God's love washing me through and through. I sway in the ecstasy of God's joy and know that this joy is my joy. I breathe in the peace of God and sigh with deep contentment knowing that peace as my own. I bask in the abundance that is God. And I know that this source of who I am is inexhaustible. I can draw and draw and draw from this well. And I will always come up full. This is the nature of God and the nature of my being. God is expressing and blessing through me, and I am awake to the deep knowing of the oneness of life, of God. There is only one power, and I am a living emanation of that knowing. I surrender all of my petty fears to God, relinquishing, relinquishing with great joy and happiness any and all thoughts, conscious or unconscious, that have led me to give power to anything other than God. I release them and leave them behind. They are no longer needed. They are from yesterday and yesteryear, and I let them go. Today is a new day. The light is here in me, and it is shining more brightly with each passing moment. I see the good in all of God's creation, and it is good. I see only God. And as this truth lights me up, I reveal my nature as generous and compassionate, grateful and nurturing, joyful and loving, strong in character and lavish in forgiveness. I'd like to share a meditation with you this evening that I've adapted from one created by Ernest Holm Svensson. Go ahead and close your eyes if you'd like. Hmm. And imagine you are coming home from a trip. You open the door to your house, step over the threshold and Set your luggage down, closing the door behind you. Just notice the quiet of your home and how good it feels to be back. But before we turn to the busyness of unpacking, let's go ahead and just be in this moment of homecoming. So go ahead and sit in your most comfortable chair and let's just take a moment to arrive to wherever it is that you are in your home. Settle into this moment and arrive to you. Just be present here. Hmm. Breathing. Being. And then pick a musical instrument. One of your favorite musical instruments. Just imagine this instrument, this musical instrument. See it in your mind's eye. And then imagine 
imagine that you are that instrument. Imagine what it would feel like just to be that musical instrument. Hmm. The materials it's made of, the construction. Wood, strings, metal, keys. Imagine being your favorite musical instrument. And then imagine a very skilled, a highly skilled musician playing you. What's that like? What's that like to simply be played? To have this beautiful music pour through you and out of you at the hands of this highly skilled musician. What is it like to be a musical instrument being played by someone else and yet producing all these beautiful sounds? What's it like surrendering to that music flowing out of your body, allowing it to come through effortlessly and without choice, just allowing, just surrendering. And then return to your breathing. Notice the air flowing in and out effortlessly. Hmm. Notice that you are being breathed. Notice that you are being lived. What music is pouring through you now? Know that God is expressing as you.
know that life is expressing as you. Know that you are saturated with the wisdom that is God. Know that you are saturated with the sufficiency that is God. You are saturated with the life that is God because you cannot not be. And as you return to this moment, notice the texture of this moment. It's sounds and sensations. Mm. And when you're ready, allow your eyes to gently open. And so it is. Thank you, Nina. Thank you. And thank you. We now have an opportunity for you to give. One definition of prosperity. It has really become my favorite definition of prosperity. It's that it's a blessing which comes about when people believe in other people. And I really believe that we're here for each other. So if you'd like to donate this evening, some information will appear on the slide for you. And whether you choose to give uh, text, whether you choose text to give um, the donate button on the website or to mail a check. We truly, truly thank you and appreciate your generosity. So now, as we bring this Wednesday interlude service to a close, we are reminded, I know I am reminded, to release what does not serve, whatever that might be. And I am reminded to remember that I am and have all that I seek. It takes courage to be. It takes courage to show up and be seen. So, repeat these words of affirmation after me. Here's who I choose to be. I choose to look in the mirror and see my truth. I know my truth and my power. I look at the blank pages of tomorrow. It takes courage to be me authentically. I am all that I seek. I rise up, put pen to paper, 
and create my life. I live. I love. I laugh. I serve. Every act of love towards myself and others inspires more love. We stand up in support of one another. All sisters and brothers in love. My life matters. My voice matters. I matter. Living courageously. Being authentically audacious. Daring to be me. This is who I choose to be. for me and for the world. And so it is. Let's do this. I release and I let go. Yes, sir.